Welcome back. It was a crime which pushed everything else off the front pages. Three men, all known criminals, found shot dead in the Essex countryside. It was a cold-blooded professional killing. The victims had many enemies, but which one wanted them executed? And welcome back to a new video on the Essex Boys case. As always, if you are enjoying the content, please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in the Essex Boys case or simply true crime in general, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Armed police arrested a man and seized a machine gun yesterday in the hunt for the hitman who blasted three ecstasy barons to death. Officers swooped on a flat at dawn and grabbed a 30-year-old as he slept with his common-law wife. The raid came 10 weeks after Tony Tucker, 38, Craig Rolfe, 26, and Pat Tate, 37, were slaughtered in a Range Rover on a snowy farm track. Marksman from Scotland Yard's Elite Tactical Firearms Unit, SO19, led the operation in Bromley, Kent. Cops, clad in steel helmets, visors and flak jackets, surrounded the flat and took up positions with Heckler and Cock rapid-fire carbines. Then the door was smashed down with a pneumatic battering ram. The man was ordered out of bed and led handcuffed from the building. The murdered gangsters, all steroid abusers and cocaine addicts, were thought to have been lured to their deaths at Rettendon, Essex by the promise of a drugs or firearms deal. They were blasted with a pump-action shotgun. Police think the killer travelled with them, then got out and picked up the weapon hidden nearby while pretending to open a gate. Tucker, an 18-stone former minder for boxing star Nigel Benn, was the evil drugs overlord ultimately responsible for the death of Leah Betts. He controlled dealers peddling pills at scores of clubs in the southeast. The venues included Raquel's in Basildon, Essex. The following article comes from the 11th of December 1995 with the headline Police warn of gang war after drug murders. Police investigating the murder of three drug dealers on a remote Essex farm track fear more violence could erupt as rival gangs try to move into the area. Yesterday, as further details emerged of the criminal careers of the three victims, Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley warned that the murders could trigger a turf war. He said, quote, I know that when three people who are involved in drug dealing are taken from the scene, somebody will try to fill the void that is created, he said. I anticipate because of that there will be a power struggle taking place, potentially there could be more violence. The dead men, Craig Rolfe, 26, Patrick Tate, 37 and Tony Tucker, 38, all from the Basildon area, had been involved in a range of crimes from petty theft to armed robbery. But recent intelligence had shown that they were moving into the drugs trade as wholesalers rather than street traders. They were, said Mr Dibley, quite high up the drug dealing hierarchy, peddling the complete range of illegal narcotics. However, Mr Dibley ruled out any direct connection with Leah Betts, the Essex teenager who died after buying an ecstasy tablet at a Basildon nightclub. He said, quote, There has been a lot of speculation that the killings are linked with the tragic death of Leah Betts. This is pure speculation. There is nothing to link these three men with Leah's death and this suggestion may well divert attention from the real investigation. Mr Dibley said that the men had been threatened. He said, quote, The drugs world is a very murky world. There's been so much publicity in recent weeks. It is clearly easy money, and it is known that there are power struggles among dealers. Police are unclear why the men were murdered. One theory is that they were killed by a rival gang trying to prevent them muscling in on a lucrative trade. He said, quote, There are no signs that any attempt was made to escape from the car. These people were more than street dealers, and it may be that others were trying to prevent them getting into a greater position of power. An alternative police theory was that the deaths of the three men who worked together were linked to an unpaid debt. The post-mortem examination results confirmed that the three men were killed with a shotgun. Seven cartridges were found in the snow close to the car. Rolf, who was in the driver's seat of his Range Rover, and Tucker, who was sitting alongside him, were both shot in the head. Tate, who was in the back seat, died of multiple shotgun wounds. Police are not sure whether the killer arrived in the Range Rover with his victims, and if he had an accomplice. Mr Dibley, who said there was no evidence of a struggle in the car, said, 
I suspect that these shootings were carried out very quickly. There are no signs that any attempt was made to escape from the car. The post-mortem examination, which was carried out more than 24 hours after the bodies were found at a remote track at Rettenden near Chelmsford, was unable to confirm the time of death. The following article is titled, Police Still Hunt Killer. Murder detectives investigating the shooting of three Essex drug barons in Rettenden in December have said they are still baffled. In a desperate effort to get witnesses to come forward and give them a clue as to who carried out the murders, a reconstruction of the killings at White House Farm was screened on ITV's Crime Monthly before Christmas. As a result, officers at South Woodham Ferrers Police Station, where detectives have set up an instant room, have received more than 30 anonymous calls from members of the public. Ian Deal of Essex Police Press Office said, quote, We are none the wiser about who did the shootings, and we are still carrying out inquiries. An article in a national newspaper appeared this week, claiming we had confirmed the second gunman was involved. At this stage, we cannot say either way, but we are still following up information we have received. Drug barons Patrick Tate, Tony Tucker and Craig Rolfe were all shot as they sat in their Range Rover on a farm track in Rettendon on December the 6th. The week prior to Christmas saw the burial of Basildon man Pat Tate at St Gabriel's Church in Pitsy. This saw 60 mourners, including Tate's brother and baby son, paying tributes. Police are still anxious to hear from any witnesses. The following article comes from the 9th of December 1995 with the headline Murdered by a Hitman. The three men murdered by a hitman in an Essex country lane were high-ranking drug dealers police said yesterday. One had been the target of a shooting a year ago. The dead men's criminal record was confirmed by police as the youngest victim's tearful girlfriend begged the public to help find his killer. The three were probably murdered in a double cross as part of the war among drug suppliers. All were significant players supplying the drug ecstasy to South Essex and East London according to drugs intelligence officers. They were regarded as quite high in the distribution network. Quote, they had become a real thorn in the side of the police, and their business had grown rapidly. An officer said, quote, They were not only buying within the British underworld, but also bringing in drug supplies from Holland. Patrick Tate, 37, described by detectives as a mountain of a man, had only been released from prison where he was serving a term for armed robbery four weeks ago. Police believe he continued to play a part in drug operations from his cell. Tate, who had close cropped hair, lived with his bull terrier in a bungalow near Basildon. Somebody had shot and wounded him outside his home in November 1994 while he was out on licence from a seven-year sentence for robbery and drug dealing. He said nothing to police. Tony Tucker, 38, who died with him, had been a minder for Nigel Benn, the world champion boxer. The third victim was Craig Rolfe, 26, whose girlfriend Donna Jaggers, 27, wept as she said, quote, I would just like anyone who is with them, who knows anything about what happened, to just come forward. The couple live together for seven years and have a six-year-old daughter. Miss Jaggers last saw Rolf when he went out on Wednesday. He was due back at 8pm, but he never returned. His body was found with those of his companions in a Range Rover parked in a lane at Rettenden near Chelmsford. Rolf and Tucker in the front seats each had two shots to the head. Tate, in the back, was shot twice in the head and once in the torso. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley, leading the murder hunt, said, The three could have died because of a double cross. It was possible they had planned to hire a hitman to remove a rival and then died when their hired killer changed sides. The police are also looking closely at the possibility that they died in a dispute over money, drug supplies and territory. Quote, the drug world is very murky, but there could have been a power struggle among large dealers, Mr Dibley said. Tension had been rising among drug suppliers in the county since Leah Betts died last month after taking ecstasy at her 18th birthday party, only four miles from the spot where the bodies were found. If you would like to learn more about the Range Rover murders, then click on the video in front of you now. You will also see the Essex Boys playlist, which has all of the videos concerning this case in one convenient folder. Many thanks for joining me for this video. I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.